This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it, man, I know what I know. People that don't know me, I'm a live slash online po poker player in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. For the last like three or four years, I'd say I've primarily been an online poker player and playing some live. And but I originally did start playing poker as a live player and then transitioned into online after a couple of years. But uh, current day, I play like anywhere from five ten to hundred two hundred. Really, just depends on what's available to me. This is live or WSOP or ACR. That's uh, mostly playing live poker at the Bellagio. And I just kind of go between those three places. What is the most memorable or largest pot that you've played? Oh, I did play a 100k pot one time in a live game where I had ace queen off all in pre-flop against the 10 8 off. Wow. That time I was scooped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got what you deserved. Ace Queen's yeah. never good there. Come on. No, no. You just you just don't win. <laughs> That's insane. What stakes but, were you playing? Uh that was 100 200 400. Okay. So, a little bit more reasonable to put in like 100 blinds with yeah. Ace Queen. I, I think those two are my biggest pots ever actually. One one and lost one. <laughs> you know what Doyle says? Ace Queen's a trouble hand. It is. Actually, you probably don't know that cuz you probably never read Super System. No, I know. I never read that one. <laughs> I did read, uh, I remember when I was starting out when I was like 16, I read the Down on the Ground of Small Ball book. Coincidentally, I never read that because <laughs> to me, Small Ball seemed like torture. Yes. And I just didn't want anything to do with people talking about betting small and checking a bunch and all this other bullshit. <laughs> have you played, you haven't had a chance to play a World Series yet, have you? No, no. Uh, I'm not a live one at least. Yeah. Oh, you were old enough last summer to play the, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. But I don't know if that really counts. It's um, different. Yeah, I'm really excited for the live one this year. It's Are you gonna great. put in like big volume? Oh yeah, I don't. I'm just gonna play the main. Just gonna play cash games every day. It's gonna be great. <laughs> so you're it's only playing great. one tournament? Yeah, yeah. Really? Or maybe no. I'll probably if there's like a heads up event, which I assume there is, I'll there play that be. one too. Yeah. Also, I'll play two tournaments. That's it. That's the plan. Yeah. Bro, I'm really excited. What do you mean? <laughs> Fire! <laughs> no, no, no. Forty-five events on the no. schedule. Add some PLO. Add some Badugi. Let's go. We need these bracelets. I don't know. I'm not just, I'm just not much of a tournament player. I understand it. I know there's a lot of money to be won in it. There's prestige to be won in it, but, uh, I don't know. I'm just more of a cash game guy. From, from the perspective of like your generation, do you think that the bracelets are just completely washed at this point? Like meaningless? I, I mean, I've personally, I mean, it just depends on person to person what you want, I suppose. Uh, for me, I don't really like never really felt much, uh, excitement to just the thought of like winning the bracelet. Yeah. It's so winning the tournament, I guess it's a nice, you just, you know, you win the most money of anyone, you win the tournament, you get first place, you feel good about yourself. Yeah. The bracelet itself isn't so big, but. I think the problem is, maybe this isn't a problem, it's just a, a an observation, but your generation is so acutely sensitive to what this game actually is, where you guys are so aware of all the variants involved, and you're so aware that winners are often just chosen by the deck, and that it's really about showing up and implementing day in and day out. And like, that's going to be who is capable of proving their win rate. The winning a tournament is just like the dumbest fucking thing on earth. Or it's just like, yeah, it feels good. But like, I got picked that day yeah. kind of thing. You're just uh, the chosen one for yeah. this thousand hands. For those of us who don't know, uh, what is Pokemon? I, uh, outside of the cartoon. I understand it's a cartoon, but... Well, there is a card game and there's a video game. Okay. There's tournaments that like, are run by the Pokemon company that are quite popular for a card game in the video game. So it's been around for like over 20 years, maybe like 25 years. And uh, so I got into that at age four with my parents. My dad got really big obsessed with it. And it was just something that I kept up with for like, I think I played ages four to 18 or four to 17. I quit a couple of years into poker or so as soon as poker started getting like real serious. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I just took Pokemon like really seriously. I would travel across the country. I've been everywhere pretty much for Pokemon, which like was insane kind of growing up. Uh, so I was already missing a lot of school, but I had all these like uh, great experiences in Pokemon, like competing. I think just like growing up competing and like serious nature is good. Yeah. Uh, so I was always kind of thinking like about the game, like trying to be the game's best player, working at that. Uh, so like for when I transitioned to poker, it was kind of the same goal. 
I remember discovering poker. I was like, wow, like this is a game you can make money at. What am I doing? Like I'm playing Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, conversely though, because I did get into poker and I was about 16 and I just hopped into one, two Pokemon is actually how I was able to do that. I already had like a bankroll for one, two. Yeah. So like, I guess Pokemon tell me a little bit about like how fruitful these tournaments were, like what were the prize pools like? And then, uh, as far as comparing the two games, how, how much variance is involved in Pokemon? Like how much skill is involved? Is it, uh, a game that's kind of principled through game theory also like uh, how did you go about being so good uh i was debatably one of the best pokemon players i never won the world championship i believe i got ninth twice i got like a second nationals i won some other tournaments but uh if you won like the world championship nowadays that'd be like 25k oh wow if you won a national championship would you go to four year uh it's 10k and a regional championship they say would be 5k and then like smaller for like down to top eight or 32 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty, I mean, I've pretty much just had money as like a 15 year old. <laughs> I was able to just play one, two and two, five. Yeah. As far as like comparing the two game types, uh, like how do you think about Pokemon versus, versus poker? Well, Pokemon is definitely nowhere near as complex as poker, but there's still, a, it's similar in some ways where there's just still like a, it's kind of like some hidden knowledge with like some luck, but mostly skill. And if you're like a great player, you might win like 60, 70% of the time. You have a lot of edge and you're creating your own deck using like picking which card, like a deck of 60 cards. So you have a lot of edge in picking the best 60 cards, predicting like what people are going to play, like how to beat that. Uh, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's still like nothing uh, it's poker. It's complexity. Like poker is much more complex. <laughs> yeah, it's similar to magic. I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, the failure cycle catches up to people. I think. Yeah. This is a difficult realm to survive for a decade plus, constantly living on a thread of of variance going one way or the other, dictating whether or not you have six figures or zero, and uh, not try to take control of the controllables, right? So it's like. When it comes to like health, phys uh, physical fitness, and and mental capacities, I think those are three realms that like we desperately, desperately have to cling to control, because at the end of the day, after we make our decision at the table and the money goes in the middle, it's not up to us who gets the pot. Yeah, it's very much out of our control. A lot of things in poker, so yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Those it's are really, great really habits. psychotic game that we've. Uh... It's a beautiful game. <laughs> it's a beautiful game. You, I, sure. I, I love your youthful exuberance uh, when it comes to this. Like, you really are fascinated by the sheer chaos that this game presents. Yeah, I mean, it's been six years. I've dedicated, I mean, my goal at poker is always to be the best player in the world. But what that really means, be the best no limit hold'em player in the world. Uh, I mean, it's just a beautiful game. It's something you can be uh, obsessed with for many, many years, and you're still like learning new things every day. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely like a lot of opportunity out there so just got to capture as much as the opportunity as you can